the real advantage of OpenAL is you've got a common API for all updates on things once they've got playing in the game, for panning, distance attenuation, and Doppler, and you get good quality uh, spatialization, especially with the hardware acceleration, and good quality sample rate conversion, which means that you actually got some idea where things are because they're not going <laughs> Okay, however, to make sure that you can take advantage of the different codec formats and uh, PS3 differences, buffer binding, different ways of uh, actually loading the assets into the game, you should try and make sure that you've got a function of your own to do the play call, and then that then ramps down to a few lines of platform-specific code to actually pull in the, uh, the compressed assets or whatever it is you're using on the game. You don't need that if you're just playing PCM, but if you're just playing PCM, you're not really taking advantage of next gen. Likewise, one really useful function to have is a thing which we call a swap or a steal call. Um, the idea of that is it takes a voice handle and rather than uh, just simply play something, it changes what's playing on an existing voice to a new asset. Now that's useful obviously for virtual voices when you decide one thing is more important than what you were playing before, but it's also very, very useful and a good efficiency saving as well when you're doing things like crossfades in the game. When you play things, you need to make a decision about what effects you're going to be binding those to. You get horrible clicks and things on any DSP-based system if you are actually switching off the DSP uh, from a voice uh, because suddenly a hole appears in the, the input to the DSP channel. So you need to make decisions about what effect binding you're going to use on voices at the time that you play them. That doesn't mean that you can't and shouldn't change the settings on the fly on the filters and the reverbs and other DSP effects you're using. But I think it's best to bind the effects of the sources when you play them. And that also means that you can quite easily have a system that, going back to the stuff I said about groups earlier, means that if you've got a smaller or a larger number of effects available in the game, that dynamic binding means that they get used on the things that most need them on any given platform. Any more? Yeah, that's right. General approach to effects, if you don't get one, you've got to come up with a nice fallback. When it comes to filters, you might find that you can do something simple with volume effects, just a subtle change, just to make sure that the information coming up from the game isn't being completely ignored, even if you decided that you haven't got the CPU power to uh, do something really interesting with the audio. Good idea to start off using the generic i3DL2 effect controls, because they'll work on everything. The snag is you don't get the positioning, you don't get the subtlety of the tone uh, control, uh, timbre control over the reverb. And really, in order to do that, you need to have platform-specific tweak values. Again, this is data, not code, um, because every reverb sounds different, and the sound designer ought to have the chance to pick the right one for each of the platforms. It's worth, when you're doing that, in the the list of values that the sound designer can tweak, obviously in real time and with saving those back. It's worth having some extra platform specific ones in there because that way later on, after you've got the i3DL2 reference implementation working, later on you can get something that plays to the strengths of the particular reverb, especially when it comes to spatialization and uh, delay times and filtering inside the regenerative part of the reverb. Final thing, make sure in your game that you offer people the option to tell you how they're listening. Because although you will be told by people, especially because it's flavour of the month at the moment, that you can magically make a 5.1 mix back into a stereo mix or possibly a mono mix. They'll even tell you you can take a mono mix or a stereo mix and make it into a 5.1 mix, but that's because their 5.1 mixes were broken to begin with. Okay, in practice, if you get that information back from the from the player, you can do a better job, and it's worth, therefore, having that option in the game. On the PC, you don't need to do it because there's something built in that enables that to be provided, but on the consoles, I really do recommend you have that there because your game's going to sound better for a lot of people if you do it. I've gone on a lot. Thanks very much, Pete. Thanks very much for listening, and uh, Pete's just going to do a little summary now. We talked about uh, some research work we've been doing. I'm going to go through this really quickly because we're a little bit short on time now. Uh, this is a version of the diagram that I showed you earlier, which shows uh, the EFX extensions. But you can see that we're planning to add a new processing block 
uh, into EFX, and so we might turn this as EFX2, or to consumers we might call it EX6, I'm not quite sure how that's going to be branded yet. Um, it seems quite a simple change to, to the routing to the API, but actually uh, this stuff's going to be host processed, and there's a lot of interesting things that we can do uh, in that block. Uh, and the great thing about this is uh, we can do processing of software on the host, but then we can pass the uh, audio data back into our 3D audio uh, and environmental audio pipeline, so we still get the advantage of our fantastic padding and spatialization and our, uh, our reverbs that Simon, again, was very polite about. Um, here's some of the things that we can do then with our EAX6 software processing block. Uh, we could do DSP effects. We could, we could also deal with decompression there, so we could support more formats because we have the audio streaming through our system. It's very easy to just add some new formats, some new buffer formats, and actually decompress those on the fly. Uh, we can set and get parameters in real time, so it's possible to not just make effects that change the audio, but effects that analyze the audio and return some values to the game. Uh, Additionally, this is going to be a plugin architecture, so we can enable developers to create their own effects. Maybe even we could wrap around VST effects that I know a lot of people are using on, uh, on PS3. So there's endless possibilities.